Monosaccharides can undergo reduction reactions and also oxidation reactions. These reactions work only on the carbon-oxygen double bond portion of the monosaccharides. All of the rest of the molecule remains unchanged. And in this video, I'm going to give you an example of reduction and an example of an oxidation. When we are reacting a monosaccharide with hydrogen and some sort of metal catalyst, this metal catalyst could also be palladium or it could be nickel, just like we've seen many times in the past. This reaction simply acts by adding a hydrogen atom to the carbon and the oxygen atom of the double bond. This is the same reaction that we've seen many times. Anytime that we have hydrogen H2 in the presence of any one of these double bonds, it just always works by converting that double bond into a single bond and adding hydrogen atoms onto the two atoms of the double bond. So we're gonna get a molecule like this. This type of molecule is called an aldose. We'll just kind of squeeze that name in there. Again, that's not the name of the molecule, but just the name of the type of molecule. Um, the other, this, and this is the only type of reduction reaction. The other type of reaction that we're looking at is an oxidation reaction. There are two different versions of the oxidation reaction. We're going to look at this one first right here with an aldose. The reagent that's used for oxidizing a monosaccharide is referred to as Benedict's reagent. And sometimes it's just written by the name Benedict's reagent. This is an oxidation reaction, which means that we are going to be adding oxygen to this particular molecule. The oxygen is specifically added up here. Like I said, it's always working in this portion of the molecule. We just magically squeeze an oxygen atom in this position right there. It looks kind of funny the way I drew it. I'm gonna make it look a little cleaner, just like this. So we convert this molecule into a carboxylic acid, making the carboxylic acid functional group. The Benedict's reagent specifically is a carbon two plus ion and a hydroxide ion. So sometimes instead of the word Benedict's reagent, you'll see these reagents written out also. And sometimes people get lazy and they don't remember to include the OH. So sometimes you'll just see the Cu2 plus. When we're doing a oxidation reaction with a ketose, this reaction is a little bit sneaky. So it's actually a little bit trickier than what we would normally expect. The ketose molecule, first of all, we want to make no changes to the part of the molecule that does not include the carbon-oxygen double bond. So this portion of the molecule is going to stay unchanged. Now what happens is the carbon-oxygen double bond actually trades places with the top portion of the molecule in some sort of magical mystery reaction. I'm going to kind of leave that spot blank right there and I'm going to put numbers on, I'm going to put logical numbers on these carbon atoms like this. So carbon number one up here at the top ends up shifting itself down here into this position. This guy becomes carbon number one and this guy becomes carbon number two. We do still make a carb carboxylic acid like there out of carbon number two. And carbon number one just becomes a standard hydrogen and an OH, so just something boring like that. This is actually a really tricky looking reaction. We're not completely sure how this actually takes place, so it's kind of like magic. 